Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me. I am still T Masso at thewatchbox.com. It is still in the description below. It is still your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Please reach out to me directly. I am still T Masso at thewatchbox.com for pricing details. Today, we are discussing a spectacular spectacular Series 2 IWC Novicianto Perpetual Calendar in Platinum. The Novicianto first launched in 1987 and it was made until 2001, but in 1995 there was a change under the hood as the previous Frédéric Piguet movement was replaced by a JLC automatic from the 960 family. And that is exactly what we have right here. We have one of those later editions in Platinum with the Jaeger Le Coult movement and the Kurt Klaus Perpetual Calendar. It's a match made in heaven. So the Novicianto which means roughly 900, and as phrased in a watch context, is meant to mean the 1900s, is a relatively compact watch about the size of a Reverso Grand Tie. So this German Swiss watch measures, as my calipers tell the tale, roughly 26, 26.5 millimeters wide by 9.3 millimeters thick, and then from lug tip to lug tip, 41 millimeters. Again, a JLC Reverso Grand Tie would be about 42.2 lug to lug and about the same width. Now, in between the lugs, this is where the surprise happens. It's actually quite broad at 22 millimeters, which is very unlike a design from the 1980s, but gives the watch a somewhat more contemporary wrist presence today. The Novicento is a gorgeous and compact piece that'll easily slide underneath the dress cuff. All in platinum, the watch is imposing, cool, a little bit austere, and very Swiss German in its character. Uh, you can see from over the top, these lugs are nowhere near the edge of my wrist, and definitively down the barrel, you can see that this would wear on a small wrist. In fact, probably a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference. So ladies, the Novicento might be a great example for you. This is a watch that could be worn by him or her, and by modern standards, this is what would be described as new vintage, a watch of the 80s or 90s that's very different from what's being made by the same manufacturer today and begins to take on a little bit of a nostalgic quality. And that's exactly what we have right here. And the Novicento has a lovely little buckle that, like the case itself, is made of PT950. You can see Brogioli made this because it's got the Brogioli B on it very much like a da Vinci pin buckle. And check this out, a retaining bar here. Uh, this is a feature that's sometimes seen on longa pin buckles, so that if you do have a small wrist and you're gonna use the smallest hole, or maybe punch a smaller one, you can sometimes get the strap pinned on the pin if it slides down too far too tightly, and that little retaining bar prevents the strap from sliding down so tightly and so far that it becomes difficult to extricate from a small wrist. Now we have small rectangular scale alligator leather here. This is a cut we rarely see, but the Novicianto actually wears it well. This is a lovely sort of light brown semi-gloss that feels quite elegant and formal and a little bit vintage compared to the modern taste for large rectangular scale. And it matches the overall proportions and scale of the watch quite well. Now in profile, you can see it's actually a fairly complex case. So we've got these sort of downturned lugs that are squared off on their ends. And then we have a concave profile that runs down the shoulder of the watch on each side. The Novicianto features a screw-down onion-style crown, very vintage-inspired in that it's unbranded and unsigned. And it is a screw-down, not so much for water resistance, but because the crown uses a quick-set system to adjust the unidirectional IWC Kurt Klaus perpetual calendar. And so you don't want to accidentally turn it when it's engaged and start jumping the calendar forward. If you look, you can see that the crystal is non-round and cambered, which is always difficult to fit and make water resistant. So this was probably a very laborious watch to craft. You can also see that the top of the watch is seamless. It's monoblock. The case and the bezel are all one piece. So it has a strikingly unified look to it with no seams or breaks whatsoever. The dial is a very simple, opaline or lightly frosted silver. There's a track outboard for reading the minutes. And if you look carefully, you can see there are polished indices for the hours. And then we have 
polished leaf or foy style hands for the time, and then blued foy style hands for the calendar. Uh, we will unscrew this real quick, and I will demonstrate how all of this works. So we have a mechanically programmed sequential perpetual calendar. And in the intermediate position, when I turn counterclockwise, note how everything, including the moon phase, moves. You'll also note that when the time comes, the year and the decade will also move. And the idea here is that because it is mechanically programmed, you just set the correct date for the year you're in, and you don't need to look at a calendar. You don't even need to look up the moon phase. It's all mechanically programmed. And then you screw it back down when you're done. The reverse of the case, eh, it doesn't give away many secrets. The Novicianto is a lovely and complex thing, but the case back is solid, and I'll tell you what is inside. So it is a JLC 960-based automatic. I, at first, I thought maybe an 889, and some sources list an 889, but that's wrong, because this watch is about 26 millimeters in diameter or across, and an 889 is about that large in diameter, so the movement can't be the same size as the watch. The 960 series was used on ladies' watches, as well as automatic winding reversos in the 1990s and early 2000s, and versions of it are still around today. It's a smaller JLC rotor automatic with a 42 to 45 hour power reserve, and I give you that range because driving the calendar module, it might have a little bit less than the standard 960s 45, but it's a 4 hertz beat rate, 31 joules by itself, but it's 36 joules when you combine it with the perpetual calendar. And of course, the perpetual calendar does not need to be corrected until the year 2100. And the moon phase can go 122 years between corrections. The movement is quite compact, 21 millimeters in diameter by 3.95 millimeters thick, not including the calendar. All this is 30 meters water resistant, but Given the age of the watch and the complexity, no reason to take any chances. This is splash-only water resistance and a very, very special watch. The Novicianto is a gorgeous and rare timepiece, and this later JLC-powered version is more mechanically robust and accurate than the earlier Frédéric Piguet. It's the one to own, and platinum, far less common than gold. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.